Hello, science people. Today, I want to do an introduction to energy. We're going to talk about what it is, potential energy, kinetic energy, a little bit about chemical energy, and how all this ties into studying biology. How does energy affect life, and how does life utilize energy? Well, let's start with what is energy? Well, energy is defined as the ability to do work. Um, all right, well, what is work? Work is making something move. And so if you are making something move, that means you are working. And if you are working, that means you are using energy. Well, let's talk about this in other terms. Let's look at this ball for a second. Does this ball currently have any energy? Well, few of you might say, no, that ball doesn't have any energy. But what happens if I get my fingers out of its way? It moves, and movement is work, and work only happens with energy. So that means that this ball was able to move on its own, which means it had some energy stored in it. I didn't throw the ball. I'm not throwing the ball. I am just getting my fingers out of its way. I am letting go. And so this ball does contain energy. Well, what kind of energy does this ball have? When this ball is just sitting here, it has what we call potential energy. Potential energy is stored energy. It is energy waiting to be released. And so right now, this ball has potential energy. It has energy stored in it. And when I get my fingers out of its way, it releases that energy. It moves. Well, when something is moving, we call that kinetic energy. And so the energy of movement is kinetic energy, and when energy is stored, we call that potential energy. Let's take a bicycle. If you are riding a bicycle uphill, I am putting my energy into the bicycle in order for it to go uphill. I am pedaling the bicycle, and it is going uphill. So because it is moving, that is kinetic energy. So I use a lot of kinetic energy, and I put a lot of kinetic energy into this bicycle to get to the top of the hill. Well, now that I am at the top of the hill, can I just roll down the hill without putting any energy into it? I can. That's because at the top of the hill, the bicycle and myself now have stored energy. We have the potential energy to roll down that hill without exerting any extra energy. How did that potential energy get there? Well, it got there because of all the kinetic energy I put into the bicycle to get it to the top of the hill. We call this locational potential energy. It has energy just because of its location. Because here on Earth we have gravity, it takes energy to get something to go uphill, but because it's already sitting at the uphill position, because of gravity, if you let it go, it will now release its stored energy. So when you're going up the hill, you're using kinetic energy, you're, you're putting that kinetic energy into the bicycle and changing its location against gravity to go to the top of the hill, and now sitting at the top of the hill, there is potential stored energy. And then once you aim downhill, you're now releasing all of that stored energy that you invested into getting the bicycle and yourself up the hill. Let's look at this ball. This ball sitting on the table does have some stored potential energy because it is above the ground. This table's in the way, but this ball has some stored energy. If we were to get this table out of the way, the ball would fall and hit the ground, releasing the potential stored energy that's in it. Well, if I want this ball to go higher, I have to use my hands, my energy. I'm taking this ball, and I am putting energy into this ball to raise it higher against gravity, and so that's kinetic energy. I am putting my kinetic energy, I'm releasing kinetic energy into this ball in order to change its location. Now that it is higher above the table and above the ground, it now has potential energy that it can release. And so when I let go, it releases that stored potential energy. Where did it get that energy? It got it from me. 
A tennis ball cannot get its own energy. A tennis ball is not a living thing. A tennis ball cannot burn calories or burn fuel, but I can burn calories causing movement. And so me burning my own chemical energy I have inside my body am able to release, I am able to lift this ball, releasing kinetic energy that is stored in my body and then change the location of this ball and now this ball has some potential energy. An example that everyone likes to talk about when looking at potential and kinetic energy is archery. When the string is not pulled, then the arrow and the string don't really have much energy. But when I take my energy and I pull back that string, I am putting kinetic energy into that string, pulling against it, pulling against that tension, and now when I'm holding, I am preventing that arrow and the string from releasing its stored energy. It has stored potential energy until I get my fingers out of the way and I release that string. When I release the string, the stored energy that is within the arrow and within the string will be released. That energy is transferred from the string to the arrow and then the arrow will now release all of that kinetic energy and fly through the air. Okay, let's talk about a different kind of energy. Looking at this paper, does this paper currently have any energy in it? Well, it has potential energy because of its location, right? I can drop it and it'll release that. But what about inside the paper? Is there actual energy in the paper? Does paper have energy? Now the answer is anything that can burn has energy within it. What type of energy? It has chemical energy. Where's that energy stored? It's stored in its bonds. Let's think about what is paper made out of? Well, paper is made out of wood, right? Well, trees and all living things have energy stored within them. That energy got there because the living things built it. The things that living things make, so the macromolecules, if you remember your macromolecules, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids, all of those things have energy. Living things put energy into making them and there's stored energy in them. It's called chemical energy, it's in the bonds. And so paper is a type of carbohydrate. It is made out of cellulose and so a tree made this material, and so there's energy within the bonds. Well, how do we release that energy? We can do it by lighting it on fire. And so once you light it on fire, what's happening is the chemicals, the material that's inside the paper, those carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens are releasing the energy that is stored in their bonds. And so now it's being released. It wasn't gonna be released until we added heat, and once we added that heat, it is now being released. For the most part, anything that can be lit on fire was made by something living, because a living thing put energy into the bonds, into the chemical bonds. Let's think about it, a rock cannot be lit on fire because it has no energy within its bonds. Now, some of my students point out coal. Coal is not a rock. Okay, it was made by a living thing. Coal is a hydrocarbon that was made by plants. And we'll talk about that in a future video. But again, if you can light it on fire, it was probably made by a living thing. That means that there is energy stored in the bonds, which once released, can release energy. And let's look at the macromolecules. We get our energy from sugar. Sugar has energy stored within its bonds. What type of energy? Chemical energy. It's a potential energy that is stored within those bonds. And then when you release them, it now gets released into a usable type of energy that our bodies use. That paper that I lit on fire, that had chemical energy within its carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens that were put together, that type of sugar that was made by the tree. And then when I light it on fire, it releases that energy. So what does all this have to do with biology? Well. All living things have to utilize energy in order to live. And if we're gonna understand the types of energy that living things use, we need to understand chemical energy. So we, as living things, utilize chemical energy in order to function and to move and do all of the things that we need to. 
So we eat food, right? Well, the food that we eat was made by living things. If you are eating plants, well, the energy that is in those plants was put there by the plant. Those are going to be mostly carbohydrates, and that is a long chain of carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens. And within those carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens are those bonds that have that energy that was put there by the plant. And when we eat it, we break apart those bonds, releasing that energy. So we eat food that's full of chemical energy. Our body then breaks that down, releasing that energy, giving us the energy that we have. I really hope you enjoyed this simple introduction explaining what energy is. If you want to know more, please look for my other videos on energy, and I'll see you next time.